Skip it up and that up. So this is in response to the Red Dragons video called Broken Games, NeoGAF, Hypocrisy Exposed. I really like the Red Dragon. I think he has a fantastic channel. I'll have it linked below in the description, and I strongly suggest you check it out. I will also say when I do videos like this where I disagree with people on YouTube, and I don't actually completely disagree with them, is that even though I disagree with somebody, doesn't mean it's a declaration of war. I don't understand why dudes in their like early 20s, late teens, and younger think that when you disagree with them that you're personally insulting them, but that's some weird thing with the human brain, and it's very frustrating, and I, I wish we evolved beyond that, but for some reason, people take uh, opinions if, if you disagree with them as a personal attack. You need to learn to get grow up beyond that and realize that you can disagree with someone and still be cool with them. Ask Solid Rev on YouTube. Uh, he's another awesome YouTube channel. He's disagreed with me wholeheartedly, and I've disagreed with him. But I still enjoy his YouTube videos. I still think he's a cool guy. And I'm not going to, like, be enemies with him because we don't see eye to eye on everything. You just, you got to, you guys got to let that shit go. But anyway, that's probably, I should make another video just discussing that. But so the Red Dragon was talking about pre orders. And I've said before in the past, and I still stand by it. Uh, now, because of how the industry is, that no one should pre-order games or buy games day one. But that doesn't mean it's right. It means because of the precedent that the industry has set by releasing broken shit, we can't trust them anymore. And the first thing he had that he talked about, I put little bullet points here, um, is that it's not just developers and publishers, it's the gamers. Now, 1% of that I agree with because we keep it's like we're in an abusive relationship like Ike and Tina Turner and we're Tina and even though we know that Ike is going to beat the fuck out of us we keep going back but it shouldn't be that way do you realize that the gaming industry is really the only industry that's like this could you imagine if Samsung I mean every every manufacturer has issues but could you imagine if Samsung every single flat screen 4k or HD TV they released had issues do you think people would line up to buy their newest product day one if every single one of them had issues no Imagine there was a clothing line that you liked and every single time they, that clothing that manufacturer made new clothing that you were looking forward to it ended up being threadbare shit that after you washed it once or twice it fell apart. Would you keep going back to that clothing manufacturer? No, of course you wouldn't. I brought up cars before if a car company God forbid released a dangerous car every single time they released a new car. GM almost was like that for a time. Do you think people would actually go back and continue buying cars from that car company if they couldn't trust them? No, those companies, okay, have to release things right day one. If they can't, they delay them. This is what bothers me about the gaming industry. The Red Dragon, it's not the gamer's fault. Yes, it's us going back again and again, okay? We shouldn't do. And that's why I said give up on pre-orders and day one buys. But it should be the industry's responsibility to say, okay, we need to make sure this product is at least as fully functional as it can possibly be when we release it. And if we can't release the game to the point where it only has some minor bugs, because I understand games are way more advanced than they ever were, then we have to delay it. But they don't do that. That's what the problem is, okay? Even with pre-orders, and this is the second point, the pre-order, you know, he was talking about how we shouldn't pre-order anything. Like I said, now it's true, but he was talking about how people pre-order games months in advance and we shouldn't be doing that. But the thing is, even if you pre-order, it doesn't mean the date that it's supposed to be released should be set in stone. It doesn't mean that there's only a finite number of times you can delay it. Okay, there's going to be the impatient kids that if you keep on delaying a game they pre-order, they may cancel their pre-order. But isn't it better to keep on delaying the game until it's released and done right than to rush a game out to market because you want to make sure you meet your quotas and the game ends up being released like shit and you have to do something like what Batman Arkham Knight did for the PC and give people refunds and stop selling it? It doesn't matter when the date. It doesn't matter that when the date is. The game should work. I don't care if it's delayed. I would rather wait and have a fully functional game. Like what, what they're doing with Batman: Arkham Knight. They're coming out with some interim patch in August. In August, 
And then they're coming out with us, uh, I think, some final patch like in September or a couple months later. That shows me that the game is way they, 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 that game had no right for PC to be released anytime soon. OK, especially now they have an interim patch that isn't still going to fix all the problems. And it's not even this month. It's next month. It's unacceptable, man. And that's what I, it's not. It should be that they then the game Batman Arkham Knight for the PC, at least should have been released maybe in September, maybe in October. I rather wait to get a perfect product or close to perfect product. Even if I pre-ordered it, then just, oh, give me the game now. I'm too impatient. Give me your broken piece of shit. No, just because a game we should be able to trust when we go to a store. Unfortunately, we can't. We should be able to trust that when we pick up that game, whether it be for a console or a PC, that it is at least fully functional. Even if minor bugs, fine, I understand. But it should be fully functional. We should be able to trust the developer and publisher that, okay, you're investing $60 of your hard-earned money. We're going to give you back a quality product, and we should be able to do that. There's no excuse. It's not the gamer's fault. It's the publisher and developer's fault, period. No question about it. Now, to a degree, what he says about Kickstarters, I I I agree with. There's one statement he made where us pre-ordering let us down the slippery slope of us giving money to Kickstarters and crowdfunding, and now we're going to be the ones fronting costs for development. And no, it, I, I see where he's trying to you know connect the two together, but pre-ordering, people have pre-ordered cars, people have pre-ordered electronics, people have pre-ordered everything. You know, it doesn't mean because we've pre-ordered stuff, they're like, hmm, we should take advantage of them by by doing a Kickstarter. I, I, I kind of get what he's trying to connect the dots, but it doesn't make sense. P- there's pre-orders have been around outside of the gaming industry forever. You know, you're just pre-ordering it to make sure you get the product. And technically, you're pre-ordering. What pre-orders really were for was so you can guarantee that you get a copy of something. So if they ran out of it, you know, okay, I pre-ordered mine, so I'm definitely going to get this game or, you know, or I'm definitely going to get the iPod or iPhone or whatever the case may be. Crowdfunding is a a totally different animal. And I I don't really think pre-orders led to that. I think what led to it more so is that there's been smaller, now the bigger corporations are getting involved where Sony wants you to crowdfund other projects that he's right, that he's right about. But the origins of crowdfunding was, for independent companies who don't have the funds to make things happen, they go to the public and say, hey, we have this idea for a game or whatever the case may be. And if you like it, throw some money our way so we can make it happen. That's where I think crowdfunding came from. I don't think it came from the fact that pre-orders were successful and they were like, hmm, we should have pe- we should have people fork up the cash for development costs because the Red Dragon, you got to think about it anyway. There was a, there's numerous articles out there that a lot of times the crowdfunding is not enough money to make the games happen anyway. So that, that I did your, your points kind of moot there because even like say these games only had crowdfunding, it wouldn't be able to finance them anyway. So I don't really, the, I see where you were trying to make the connection, but it doesn't really work. The bottom line is crowdfunding initially was started to help out smaller projects that couldn't get off the ground because the independent game developer or whatever just didn't have the funds. That was where crowdfunding came from. It did not come from, oh, pre-orders did great. Let's see if we could just get people to fork up the money for development costs. Because again, I know I'm repeating myself, it wouldn't cover the development costs anyway, especially for bigger games like Shenmue 3. So whatever. Moving on, though. Now, where the Red Dragon is right about crowdfunding is this, and it needs to be said It's black and white, and I need people to understand, okay? Because I think there is a lot of people that don't. When you donate to crowdfunding, there is that a very significant chance that you will get dick back, okay? You could donate two hundred dollars, you could donate five dollars. It doesn't matter. There's it has happened many times. Projects fall through. People do not get refunds in most cases. I'm not telling you not to donate to a Kickstarter. I, I think. It's an awesome idea in a lot of cases to see crowdfunding. I've kind of been, you know, jaded by it because I see so many fall through and I'm very wary of them now. But on paper, Kickstarters are noble. 
the intentions are noble and i'm not telling you not to do it because there has been successful kickstarter indiegogo so on and so forth projects that have come through with the help from crowdfunding so if you believe in something i'm not telling you not to give to a crowd a crowdfunding campaign but you have to know going into it that that campaign can fail the developer who's the indie developer or whatever behind the game they may be piss poor with their finances burn through the money and have no pro and have no product for you at the end of it so you just i don't think a lot of people do old and young understand kickstarters just because you give money just like the red dragon said it does not mean that you're going to get something out of it okay so buyer beware when you give to something like that you may get nothing in return. So let that dictate how much you empty out your wallet for a Kickstarter campaign in the future. So Red Dragon, the bottom line is this. I understand what you're saying due to the climate of the gaming industry now and the precedent that they set. Yeah, we can't trust day one games. We can't trust pre-orders. But it shouldn't have been that way. When we gave our hard-earned money, whether it be 60, 80, or some Jesus Christ, now some games with DLC or 100 bucks, we should have been confident in these companies to say, hey, we are going to wait and make sure we deliver a quality product day one with as little bugs as possible because the consumer has good, good faith in us to give us their hard-earned money so we need to give them a quality product back that we can be confident in the day it's released. And they failed us. They have absolutely failed us. And it is unacceptable. In no other industry would this be tolerated. And it should not be tolerated in the gaming industry. Yes, unfortunately, now we should wait to pre-order games. But we should have been able to trust them to give us something that worked at least very well from the day it was released. This is Richard Review Tech USA signing out. Have a good one.